Hi there, welcome to my No BS Gear Review channel. Tonight we'll be visiting an old friend because my viewers identified a new problem with this Workshop Professional Precision Adjust Sharpener. I thought I was done with it, but apparently I'm not. In my older video, I showed a particular fix that hundreds, if not thousands of people applied to this device. It's recently when I started getting comments from the folks saying that a design feature change in Workshop Professional Precision Adjust that doesn't allow them to apply the fix while the original program still exists. The specific problem was these little bushings inside this plate carrier would wear out. They would egg out by almost a millimeter, quite significant, and that would create a wobble between the plate carrier and the guide rod. And that wobble would result in a very inaccurate edge. The edge angle would vary, which defeats the purpose of the whole device. And to fix this issue, I identified these bronze self-lubricating bushings that you can get on Amazon. They're like nine bucks for 10 of them, which you can then replace the original plastic ones with and enjoy your sharpener the way it was intended to be enjoyed. Imagine my surprise and a few months back, I started hearing from my viewers that WorkSharp changed the design of the carrier to the point where you cannot disassemble it anymore. And so you cannot do this replacement yourself. What they offer is they sell the plate carrier for 25 bucks. Some marketing genius at WorkSharp decided that it's better for them to keep selling you the plate carrier rather than fixing the problem or letting you decide what you want to do. And that is not right. But let's not worry, the fix is here. And tonight I'll share it with you. I ordered a brand new plate carrier from WorkSharp. It came, here's the purchase order glued to the exterior of the box, there's no other receipt. And as you can see, the component is packaged diagonally in this rather large box. One of my viewers commented that his was binding, and I think the reason is because when it's packaged like that tightly in the box, any force striking this box diagonally, when it's, say, dropped or squished between other boxes, may deform the rod, and that in turn will cause binding. When WorkSharp Professional Precision just first came out, it shipped with these plate holders here. And as you can see here, there are six screws that hold it together. So you were able to disassemble it and remove the nylon bushings. And folks went ahead and bought uh, the self-lubricating bronze bushings that I recommended. They're standard dimension. They're 10 millimeters tall, 10 millimeter outside diameter, and 6 millimeter inside diameter. So they were able to buy them. They come in a pack of 10. You only need two. And then you have spares for the rest of your life. This device was able to be taken apart. And uh, about three months ago, my viewers started reporting that the new device has no screws and it's impossible to disassemble. I took a close look because one of them sent me his, he replaced it with a Hopstone Universal plate holder. So he sent me one of his, I found very quickly, I couldn't disassemble it, so I then broke off the end just to see what it looks like inside. And what I found is that the bottom and the top are glued together with a very rigid adhesive similar to super glue or cement. So there is absolutely no way to remove the bushings without completely destroying the device. I was able to use it to sort of develop the solution, but because I wanted to start with a clean slate, I ordered this brand new. They're like $26, I think, or 20, you know, anyway, after taxes and shipping, $32. And this is uh, what I got. So let me put the plate back on. It needs to be with the plate like this, so we can assess how much of the rocking there is. And the reason we need to do that is because I don't recall the original device being as wobbly as this one straight out of the box. Fortunately, mine survived shipping intact. It's sliding smoothly, but the interface between the bushings and the plate holder is loose. I know the bushings themselves are spot on, but look, I'm getting plus or minus 
half a degree variation when I apply pressure to the rod. Turning the theme of this video from wouldn't it be nice to do this in the future to must do it right away. There is no good way to extract the factory nylon bushings from this device. So I'll be adding my fix to what already is in there. Both will remain in place. And that's why I'm measuring the force required to move the rod. Because I suspect it may get a little bit tighter now that there will be more span between where the bearing pressure is applied as it slides through. In this case, it's just under one pound. So here's the solution that I came up with, and it works. You will have to order the same bushings that were applicable to the old style plate holder, and then we will clot them in a heat shrink tubing. And I'll show you how to do all this and provide all the links to all the components that you need in the description. We start by pulling the rod out of the holder. Uh, we are not going to do anything with the nylon bushings that are already there. It's a waste of time and energy to try to remove them. And they apply so little bearing pressure because they're already loose that removing them will not help us at all. So we need uh, the set of bushings. We need half inch heat shrink. I highly recommend the kind that does not have an adhesive layer. Just a plain heat shrink, half inch diameter, and we will need a couple items in addition to that that I purchased on Amazon. These are compression springs. And another item you will need uh, those little grommets. They're electrical conduit grommets. Again, I will provide all the information in the description and the link to it on Amazon. On the carrier itself, there is a larger hole on the side opposite to where the bushings are installed. And this hole is there to increase your stroke to sharpen extra wide blades like cleavers. My mod will limit you to about 5 inch wide blades. Or in some cases, even wider blades as long as you don't mind higher grind angles. And we'll jump into the solution mode right away. So let's set these aside. So, stay. This is all we're going to need. A grommet, two bushings a piece of heat shrink without adhere, adhesive um, and a little ingenuity. Uh, for the tools, you're gonna need scissors and a file. What I'm going to do, I'm going to file the very end off just to give it a little bit of a bevel here on the edge. Otherwise, it's extremely hard to put it into the holder. You will understand why we need this grommet um, in a second here. So I file it all around. You don't need to do a lot of it. So set that aside. You will also need a lighter. We're going to take this brand new spring and then we're going to increase its length by about half an inch by simply stretching it. You stretching it, it permanently deforms and becomes longer can now use either one. Okay, and then uh, this is the hardest part. What you need, this is 10 millimeter. You need about 12 to 13 millimeters of this material. So I'm uh, right at 13 right now. I'm just going to mark, put a mark on my heat shrink and then take my scissors and, uh, you know, you can use the some other means but I'm gonna eyeball it straight across perpendicular and get me a link of this and so now I'm going to set my bushing inside this uh, sleeve right and center it as best I can lengthwise I'm gonna throw it on this rod like this so I don't have to hold it in my hand and I'm just gonna simply start heating up uh, the heat shrink so you, you you need to stay about quarter to half an inch from the surface of the heat shrink. This is how it's done. So only the radiant heat from your lighter. You can use obviously a heat gun, but just try not to burn the rubber. I mean, it's pretty fire resistant, but um, it's just better practice to keep it a quarter inch away. Just take your time. And when uh, it shrunk to the uh, OD of the bushing, just uh, hold your lighter right here and just go around so that the ends round off 
and encapsulate the ends of the bushing. Check my work here. Uh, have two lighters handy because they get hot. And, you know, so you want to be safe. Well, maybe this style of the lighter is even better. Or use a heat gun. So when you're satisfied, it should look like this. Let me show you up close as best I can. So it should look like this. And now it's cooled down a little bit. You can take it off and check that the ends, it's critical that the ends encapsulate at least partially the, the bushing. I can now drop it in and it has a much better engagement with the whole surface. You put the first one in, then you grab your stretch spring, drop it in, drop the second bushing in, and now take your grommet, where'd it go? And the first time you do it, this is gonna be reusable actually, I've reused it. Um, oh, I forgot to show you. This is my little Olite Mini 2. I hope you can see in there, the housing has these cavities right there. Right there, there are cavities. They're oriented horizontally like so, like in this orientation. There's a cavity here and a cavity there. So I don't know if you can see it on camera. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to line up the grommet. See, there's these little tubs. They'll fit just nicely into these cavities. You know, I'm applying quite a bit of force and eventually it'll pop in. You know, I can even take the plate off. I can even top it just to make sure. It, it, and it doesn't have to like be flash. It's, it's gonna stay there. The spring is not very strong. Let me show you. This, this spring is maybe uh, maybe a pound, pound and a half in, in this condition. So uh, it's not gonna fly out no matter what. So it's, they're pretty good and you're gonna need like a little pry bar or a screwdriver or even your knife blade, which I don't recommend to pry it out, but pry it out, you could. All we have to do now is reinsert. So this was up before toward the threads, uh, but what I would recommend, I would put it down because all the real sharpening is happening down there. Sliding quite well. And that's your mod. You're basically done. So let's check it out. You will notice right away that a little bit more force is required to move the plate holder on this rod. Let's measure it. So it went from under one pound to three and a quarter pounds, a 2.29 pound difference. And that's before the bushings were burnished in or even the rod itself. The question is, did we solve the problem? Was this increase in push force justified? So here we are, zeroed out. Let's see. I get nothing. I don't detect any wiggle in up or down direction, just a little bit of a rod deflection. But I just basically eliminated all the wobble. Unfortunately, I discovered another little issue with this revision one or early workshop professional precision adjust station. The new plate carrier is thicker where the plate is mounting. So now it will not drop into the slot on the mast that holds it elevated when you're manipulating and rotating the blade. This is a, an annoyance. Uh, the old device, let me show you how the original plate carrier did this. That's the original with the screw holes. Here you go. So it stays in there, drops a lot deeper and uh, allows you to rotate the blade. Whereas this guy, no matter what I did, I could not get it to insert. Let me know in the comments, please, if your newer device, which is marked with a different revision on the bottom of the box, if it has the same issue. Why did Workshop deprive us of the right to repair our own device? Here's a new set coming out shortly here. $449 gets you a suitcase and the same exact Workshop Professional Precision Adjust. There's no real difference in the sharpener itself, but it comes with this huge suitcase uh, with a bunch of additional plates and probably other gizmos. The problem I'm having with that brand is this little trick they did where you 
by the sharpener and now you are locked into always repurchasing these plate holders whenever those flimsy nylon bushings wear out. Um, to go to that extent where they eliminated the feature that enabled us to make our own replacement, it bothers me. What do you all think about this? Let me know in the comments, please. We, however, were not defeated by the marketing geniuses. We have the solution and WorkSharp, you will not see another dollar of my money for a very long time.